Hello friends, I am John and I am the 3D 80s kid. Hey, welcome to episode four. In this episode, I'm going to ask a question that's been asked many times throughout the years. Who is the greatest baseball player of all time? Uh, to start, I'm going to give at least uh, what seemed to be, in many's view, uh, top five candidates that people will possibly throw out there. Uh, starting from uh, when they played, uh, we have Ty Cobb, uh, Babe Ruth, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, and Barry Bonds. Um, one of the first questions I'm going to ask on this topic is really, um, what influence did their era have on how they performed? And to start with that, I'm just going to put it out there that anyone that played before 1948 was not necessarily facing the best. We have no idea if Ty Cobb or Babe Ruth were actually playing against the best players or if they were even the best players of their eras themselves. Uh, when a chunk of the population is just not invited to play, then uh, you can't really say you're the best if you're uh, not uh, playing against the best of that group of people you've uninvited. So... I'm going to drop those off the list now. Uh, as far as other eras, uh, baseball was the king sport in America, basically, from its origins uh, until it started to shift after, I would say, the first major event that caused a shift was 1969. Uh, when Joe Namath uh, made his what seemed crazy prediction and his New York Jets defeated the Baltimore Colts in what became known as Super Bowl III, uh, that caused, started to cause a shift in the cultural landscape. Uh, the Super Bowl became uh, the biggest single sporting event in the country over the coming years. Uh, gaining growth in popularity through the 70s, and I would say by the 80s, football was right on par with baseball. And as a result, they started siphoning off some of the best athletes in this country that shifted towards football, when previously they might have played baseball instead. In fact, one of the names on my list, uh, Willie Mays, I recently watched the old Sports Century documentary series on him, uh, something that played around 2000 on ESPN, and it was stated that uh, his best sport in high school, he happened to attend an all-black high school in Alabama, was actually football. Uh, he was the star quarterback. Uh, they said with his very huge hands, he had such a command of the football throwing it and, of course, we saw how quick he could run. I um, mean, we saw how good of an arm he had out in center field. Uh, can you imagine uh, Willie Mays playing in today's game where he actually would have been allowed to play quarterback in the NFL? Uh, it seems like he might have made quite a career if he were born today. Um, but going back on topic here after the little diversion... Uh, you know, besides the, the shift where football started siphoning off the talent, we'd also had the rise of basketball. Uh, the 80s with uh, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson's rivalry uh, finally saw the days when basketball and the NBA started being broadcast live uh, and popularity rising. And by the late 90s with Michael Jordan coming onto the scene, rose to a whole nother level to the point where by uh, the 90s, basketball was right there on the same tier as well. And uh, 
And by that point, football was probably even surpassing baseball in terms of popularity by the time the 90s rolled around. And to the point where now uh, baseball is on the third tier and in danger of slipping farther. So, uh, so back to then, the point uh, feels like uh, Barry Bonds didn't necessarily play against the highest level of competition with it being siphoned off to other sports as well as uh, the bit of the delusion of the talent that was available, seeing as though there were uh, 30 teams available <laughs> in his era, whereas near the end of May's and Aaron's career, I think baseball had reached 24 teams, but a big chunk of their career was only 16 teams uh, that they had to face in the major leagues, and uh, that is... a uh, pretty uh, intense level of competition relative to the talent pool, considering also baseball was the king of the sports during their era as well. So um, at that point, I've narrowed my list already to uh, Willie Mays or Hank Aaron. Um, well, Hank Aaron's hitting statistics are a bit higher than Mays. Uh, he was clearly no match to him as far as fielding goes. Uh, Willie Mays, with his amazing uh, catches, uh, ended up getting uh, awarded 12 gold gloves over his career. Uh, so besides being an amazing hitter, I mean, both of them were named uh, by Ted Williams to his uh, 20 greatest hitters who ever lived for the Ted Williams Museum. Uh, but Willie is the only one of those 20 people that was also uh, named by most people as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, fielders at their position as well. Um, you know, the the hitting, the defense, the arm. I mean, one of the most amazing things actually about that, uh, the whole the catch in 1954 World Series is not just the catch itself that he ran that down and caught it, but the fact that he spun around so quickly and threw back to the infield uh, with power and accuracy to second base to only allow the runner that was started there to advance one base and not actually score on that out uh, was just as amazing as the catch itself. Uh, so the arm, uh, you know, the stealing bases, he was actually uh, the stolen base leader for four seasons a row, in a row in his career. Uh, and I mean, I imagine if he would have known it was a big deal, uh, he could have been, you know, the first 40, 40 or even 50, 50 player in baseball history. If, uh, he would have known that was a big deal at the time. Uh, but people just didn't steal at the rate, uh, required to do that back then. Um, so, um. With that being said, I'm gonna show you what uh, for me is my favorite uh, Willie Mays card of all time. And uh, we'll take a look. I just love the 1960 tops design with the close up shots and then the other pose on the left and then the colors. Um, Love how they do the alternating colors in the names. Uh, they put the classic logos down in the bottom left. And uh, to me, this it, it just looks so classic and just uh, reeks to me of 1960s style there. Uh, now this one was actually the very first vintage card I even purchased. Um, I knew I wanted to get a Willie Mays card and I carefully looked around at all the different designs and I loved this design from the moment I saw it and knew this one had to be mine. Um, at only a 1.5 grade, it was a nice bargain. Uh, this example is presents very nicely, despite the fact that it does have a crease that is uh, just to the right of Willie's head, which uh, knocked the score down to where it is, uh, most severely anyways, you know, as well as the uh, 
very pet friendly corners on this card. Um, another extra little crease that's going uh, up there through the M in maze as well. So uh, this was a well loved card and uh, I have loved it myself and uh, loved seeing it up on my wall ever since I got it. Um, but uh, as such, uh, I did want to get an upgrade. And also, if you saw my last video, I like them um, in a tuxedo. So here is my upgrade. And here it is in all its glory, as Adam of Vintage Sanctuary would say. This card is just gorgeous. And I agree. So um, I think it pops in the tux. And the, the colors are just even brighter and more vibrant on this version than the uh, previous one where it is a bit faded. Uh, and I am very happy with this one. And this one will pretty much be a life lifetime uh, hold here for me. I am most pleased with the look of this card. Uh, see no reason to ever swap it out in the future. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed my cards here and my little discussion. And I uh, hope to see you again in the future. Thanks.